Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're beginning a new video series, a video series on the Fourier series. Now, what is a Fourier series? Well, what, that's what this particular video is all about. It is a mathematical way to represent non-trigonometric periodic functions. Here's an example of a non-trigonometric periodic function. It's a square wave function. So a Fourier series enables us to take a periodic function like this, a non-trigonometric periodic function, and write it as an infinite sum of trigonometric functions. And here's the general equation. Here, f of t simply represents the square wave function, and we can then rewrite it as an infinite sum, here's the infinite sum, of either a cosine or a sine function added to a DC term or a constant term. So this represents the DC term, this represents the AC terms, which are dependent on the frequency, the radial frequency of the periodic function. Let's remember that the frequency of a function is 1 over the period, and the radial frequency is 2 pi times the frequency, or 2 pi over the period. So these trigonometric functions are dependent on omega, or 2 pi over the period. Notice also that n is simply the number here going from 1 to infinity. Now to solve for an equation, a set of equations like that, to solve for the trigonometric functions, really what it comes down to, it comes down to finding the DC term a sub naught, and to find a sub n and b sub n. Remember that a sub n and b sub n are an infinite number of constants from n equals 1 to infinity, but we typically will find some sort of representation of these two sets of constants. Here are the general equations to find a sub naught, a sub n and b sub n, and then in later videos we'll show you how to actually proceed with that, how to actually go and find these particular constants. So it comes down to, if you want to find the Fourier series of a step function like this, or in this case of a periodic function, I should say, a square wave function, it comes down to finding the values of these particular constants. If we do that for this particular example, and we'll show you later how to actually accomplish that, you'll end up with something that looks like this. This is the solution, what we're looking for. So the function, as a function of time, is equal to that constant term, one-half, plus an infinite sum of trigonometric functions, in this case, the sine function. Notice it's 2 over pi times the sine of pi t, 2 over 3 pi times the sine of 3 pi t, 2 over 5 pi times the sine of 5 pi t, and so forth, out to infinity, and that can then be written in a compact form like this. It's the constant term 1 half plus 2 over pi, because we can factor out a 2 over pi from each of these terms, times the infinite sum of 1 over n times the sine of n pi t. Notice we're summing over k, where k can be related to n by n being 2k minus 1, which forces us to only have n being odd numbers and not being even numbers. And you can see here that sure enough, n equals 1, n equals 3, n equals 5, and so forth. Essentially what it does, if we add up all these functions together, notice we're simply adding the first AC term, which is this term right here, the sine of pi t, the second AC term, which is this term, the third AC term, which is this term, the fourth AC term, which is this term, and if we continue to add up all these terms together, we end up with something that looks very much like this periodic square wave function. So it's interesting that we can actually represent a periodic square wave function as the sum of these trigonometric functions. But once we've done that, once we've converted this into something that looks like this, it's a lot easier to find solutions to an input. For example, if this was an input to an electronic circuit, we can then more easily find the output of the electronic circuit by utilizing this form of the input to the circuit rather than the square wave function. So the objective is take this, transform it to this by finding these constants, and you're much better shaped to find solutions to all kinds of problems. So in this series, we're going to first learn how to convert from periodic functions like this into a summation of an infinite summation of trigonometric functions. And then we're going to learn all about the rules. And then we're going to see how it can be applied to all kinds of examples and all kinds of situations. 
but now at least you know what a Fourier series is and now we'll show you how to actually utilize it, calculate it and utilize it in the videos to come and that's how it's done.